Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching Behind the Brand. I want to give a special shout out to my friends at Pixability for making this episode possible. And don't forget to subscribe. It actually makes a huge difference to convince the people that don't believe you can watch awesome content like this for free on YouTube. Hope you enjoy the next episode. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, my name is Matthew Santoro and you're watching Behind the Brand. Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here at VidCon with Matthew Santoro, YouTube creator and world's most popular Periscoper right now. Thank you, sir. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming and get me. Formal handshake. We even sealed the deal. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so Matthew, I usually ask my guests, how'd you get this job? Good question. Uh, well, I walked into YouTube and I said, I want, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I just, you know what? I used to be an accountant and I started uploading videos in my spare time as a hobby because it was something that I was really interested in. And it quickly became my passion. And then when I lost my job, I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna go all in on YouTube. And I went from, took me about a year of uploading consistently to get any sort of traction at all, uh, like anything. And uh, after about a year of doing it consistently, I all of a sudden my channel took off. And in one year I went from like 10,000 subscribers to uh, three million, I think. Wow, let's unpack that just a little bit. So you yeah. you were an accountant. That's the, that's the condensed version. You were, you were an accountant. Yes. You lost your job. Yes. The economy went bad or what that's happened? That's exactly it. Yeah, the economy, that was right in the middle of the recession. And I worked for a small firm and they lost a bunch of, 30% of their clients and they laid people off. Yeah. And uh, I remember being like, but did I do anything wrong? They're like, no, it's just that's the way it works. Yeah, it and then that was like the light bulb went off for me. I'm like, it, you know, there's this great quote that Jim Carrey said, which is you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a risk on doing something that you love. Yeah. And I love that. And I live my life by that because that's actually what I did. Because I never really, accounting was never my passion. You're never going to meet someone that's like, I love accounting. No, never going to happen. But maybe the occasional nerd. <laughs> I'm a self-proclaimed nerd as well. But anyway, you get the point. Um, but like for me, it was just all about doing what I loved. And it just so happened to take off for me. And I'm incredibly thankful and blessed to do what I do. How did you arrive at the kind of content that you wanted to create? I mean. Did you experiment? Did you know exactly I what did. you wanted to do? No, I, I did. I always did list videos, but I didn't know I was doing list videos. Like, yes. I would do like uh, 20 ways to lose your man card. That was like one of my first videos. Yes. Really like rude and crude old video. No, I'm a big fan. Oh, have you seen it? I've seen most of your videos. My yeah, man. I yeah. appreciate that. So a question for you is like, did you start this whole kind of Buzzfeed kind of trend where you know people love lists, yeah. people love statistics. Do you feel like you sort of tr started that, ignited that trend? I or? wouldn't take credit for it. To be honest with you, I don't think any of us can take credit for it. A little bit. No, no, no. Well, I'll tell you why. Because the, the list format is not a new format. Yeah. Johnny Carson started it, right? I believe Johnny Carson. Uh, the top tens or like David Letterman, like they've been doing this for, yeah. I don't know, since the 1960s or whatever they started. So a Billboard top 20. Yeah, and Billboard top 10, 20. So like. The list format has been a timeless format that has always been popular. And uh, I just started doing it regularly and it just worked. Yeah. Yeah. How do you come up with the next list? Like, are you watching trends? How are you monitoring the, in the interwebs? Yeah, um, well, uh, basically, like, ha sometimes it'll be, I'll be walking, you know, around and I'll see something and I'll say, oh, that would be something that would be a cool top 10 list. Or, if I'm completely lacking motivation, I'll go online and search one of the many like hundred list websites that are out there and I'll see like a keyword that'll be like, oh, that's interesting, animals. Yeah. Okay, biggest animals in the world, how about that? And then I'll Google that and cherry pick from, like I said, the hundred list websites that are out there, the best, most interesting ones and then do further research on those. And you make it your own? I make it my own, yeah. yeah. So you have a very distinct brand. Um, tell me about the teeth. Oh man, that's so funny. I was gonna say it's a lot of teeth. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just I apparently that's like what I'm known for. I didn't mean for that to be a thing, but <laughs> that's the thing. Feel free to use that as like the thumbnail for this. Yeah. You go to great extent to keep your teeth white, and uh... Uh, it's just maintenance. Yeah, it's all it is. People are like, what do you do? I'm just like, well, I like to make a joke and say like, well, my mother was a bucket of white paint and my father was a shark. So it's just like lots of teeth. No, um, I, I, it's just maintenance. Like I don't really do anything special. I just, I've never had braces, uh, but I just, yeah, I use like a whitening toothpaste and Listerine whitening, not a sponsor, and that's it. Yeah. And you drink coffee through a straw? Or? I, yeah, and it's just maintenance. I drink my coffee through a straw, which is something that I've become known for. I also drink any dark liquid through a straw. So like red wine through a straw. Chocolate milk. 
No, not chocolate milk. Doesn't yeah. stain your teeth. Red wine stains your teeth. Coffee stains your teeth. So if you want to keep your teeth white, drink it through a straw. But I think I might come out with my own line of like straws for hot beverages. Not a bad idea. Yes, that was the point of this interview. That's why we were supposed to do this. We'll ding that up right now. Bing. Yeah, that's right. I'll cut you in on the proceeds. Um, talk to me about collaboration because uh, recently you've been sort of rediscovered, I think, and you're doing these deals with brands. Talk to us about how important collaboration, either with other YouTube creators or brands is. Uh, well, okay, I, I, I like to collaborate with people that are creative. It doesn't matter how big their channel is, they could have a thousand subscribers, they could have 10 million. It doesn't matter if they have good content, I'll collaborate with them. Um, and I just love doing it because it enhances the product. Um, when I work with brands, I only work with brands that I genuinely like. So I'm never ever going to accept money from a brand that I don't believe in. Like if it was like a tobacco company, I'm never ever gonna promote smoking. They could offer me a million dollars, I'd never do it. Look into the camera and let's get a little personal. Okay. You know, a lot of people watch this show, they're entrepreneurs, they're YouTube creators, they have a startup, um, and some of them get stuck. Yep. <laughs> they get stuck. I've been there. Yeah. Talk to us about some of your best advice. What advice would you give these people? Look right into the camera and let's get a little personal. Talk about that. Um, my advice if you are an entrepreneur or somebody that's starting something new for the first time, just keep at it. That would be my number one piece of advice. Don't stop. And you hear that a lot from people, but you need to just believe that it will happen one day. And your driving force needs to be that you're passionate about it. That's the number one thing. Because if you start something wanting to be rich or wanting this or that and the other, you may not succeed because your motivation isn't going to keep you going. Because after six months, you're gonna be like, I'm still not rich, I can't do this anymore. But if you have a passion inside of you for something, that will keep you going forever. So for me, I did it for four, I did YouTube videos for four years before I even got any sort of exposure at all. And there were many times where I was like, I don't, I can't just can't do this anymore. Like I'm putting all this work into it, it's not paying off. But every time I wanted to quit, I just remembered, well, what else are you gonna do? This is your passion, this is what you love to do. So keep at it, make sure you have a passion for it, and something will happen if you work hard enough at it. That's good advice. Matthew, you know, people watch you, they love you, um, you have a lot of fans. Tell them now, share something maybe we don't know about you. you I mean, you're very open, you're transparent, but what's something we may not know about you? Uh, I actually have long, luscious hair. This is, I'm wearing an invisible wig right now. No, I'm uh, just kidding. Um, something they don't know about me. I would tell you the straw thing, but I guess you already knew that. Um, man, I'm a pretty big nerd. Like, I'm a huge nerd. I think, I don't know if that's like, public knowledge or not. But it's like, kind of obvious. Yeah, I mean, man, I don't know. I'm a, to be honest with you, I'm a pretty open book. Like, there's not much people don't know about me. Like, I, I'm a huge Drake fan. That's kind of public knowledge, too. Honestly, I'm just an open book. Like, every, there's nothing people don't know about me. I'm just, everything's online. So you're in Canada? Yeah. Um, why not come to Hollywood or, like, where it's all happening? I get that question a lot. Why don't you move to L.A. and stuff? The thing, the beautiful thing about YouTube is you can do it from anywhere. So I started uploading videos from my apartment five years ago and in a little town called St. Catharines. And now I've recently moved to Toronto and I love it there. Shout out to the six. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, you can do it from anywhere. And I've considered moving to LA and I've been more and more considering it because everything happens here. All of my friends are here. It would be nice to see them more often. But, uh, you know, other than that, I don't need to move. You can do it from a small town in Nebraska if you want or wherever. So it doesn't matter where, you know, so there's more opportunity here, but it's not, you don't have to move here to make your dreams happen. You're a super positive guy. I love that about you. Um, and I no, I'm not. No, I'm just kidding. I think that inspires a lot of people. Thank you. Um, I want to go back to the F word, failure, a little bit, because um, I think a lot of people get stuck on it. I think, you know, a lot of people say, well, failure is not an option. But really, it is an option. It has to be, right? Because you can't have success without it. Right. You've got to go through that adversity to, to break through. Talk to, us, talk to us about one or two of these mistakes that you made along the way. Uh, and not, you know, for any other reason, but like, tell us what you learned from it. Sure. Yeah, um, well, I can tell you two things. From the YouTube side, I've experimented with various formats. Not all of them worked. You mean long form, short form? Uh, no, like, when I, I did, <laughs> Before I, my channel blew up, I did a series called Real Talk. 
And anyone that's been following me for a long time might re remember those videos, but I only did like four of them. And it just didn't work, it just it wasn't good, no one really liked it, so I quit it. But I didn't stop doing YouTube videos, so you know, it's all, you can't be afraid to fail at something, because that's how you make a breakthrough. It's like, you try something that doesn't work, try the next thing, try the next thing. And don't get discouraged, just realize that that's part of the process. So that's, that's the YouTube side of it. On the social media and personal side, uh, one of the biggest things I've learned that I don't want to call a mistake but was more of a life lesson is learning how to deal with drama and that comes with anything. If you're in an office, there's always going to be people that like, oh, I don't like Sally, She's, Sally's talking crap about me. And it's the same thing in the YouTube world. There's people that are going to throw shade at you and they're looking for a response. And that happened to me once where, you know, these people that don't have a voice and that were trying to get, you know, trying to stick me and like poke the, poke the bear to make the bear go, ah, it worked. And I responded and it worked in their favor. And that's something that I learned as like, okay, I learned that, you know, once you get to a certain level, people will purposely try to poke at you. And, and it was a huge life lesson for me. I was like, okay, this is something that's good. It was, so it wasn't a failure. But again, everything's about learning. If something bad happens, whether you know you start a new series and it doesn't work, or people you know try to poke you and you respond and you shouldn't have, learn from that. There's nothing wrong with that, but just don't do it again. And learn from it and grow as a person and try the next YouTube project. Or continue with your life and never do that again. And that's what it's all about. It's growing as a person. And I don't have any regrets, only life lessons. Did you ever get shamed? Like, you know, we're not 15 anymore. Um, we're adults. You've been an accountant. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you ever get those voices from the sort of the peanut gallery, or like get a real job, or you oh, know, all the time? Yeah. How do you, how did you deal with that? Uh, I, I get like you know, there's always haters online, right? And like the vast, overwhelming majority of the people that watch me are very, very positive. I make it a point to put positivity and positive energy out there, and education and things like that. And I think that that attracts like-minded people. Um, but anytime someone says something silly like get a real job, my favorite response to that or my response to that is I don't have a real job, I have an unreal job. And that's my favorite thing to say because it, it's true. It's like the real jobs of the world suck. It sucks going into a nine to five. And I can say that, I did that for years. Going into a little cubicle, putting my head down, making money for someone else. And the beautiful thing about the world we live in now, and I'm looking at the camera, because anyone watching this, this is important. If you're doing something that you don't love, stop doing it. There's no reason in today's world to do what you don't want to do. The internet has made it so possible to work for yourself no matter what it is. And, and if you're good enough at anything, you can make money from it, anything. If you like to juggle with a cat on your head, you can make money from that. I don't know how, I can't tell you how, but it's possible. And usually it's the internet that can make that happen. Good stuff. All right, we've been spending a few minutes with YouTuber, awesome dude, Matthew Santorio. Matt, thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, high five. <laughs> thanks, man. Yeah.